and Brahms is sitting there with friends and they openly ridiculed him and laughed at him, etc. It's quite cruel what he went through. And yet he stuck to his guns in a sense, although he took advice from a lot of conductors and changed and rethought uh, some of his symphonies, especially the fourth. Mm -hmm. The seventh was not uh, fiddled around with as much. And uh, we have this magnificent statement. And one has to give in to that. One cannot correct Bruckner. One cannot say this is uh, too long or short, make cuts, add to the instrumentation. No, one has to do it his way. And balance, of course, the orchestra uh, accordingly. Zubin Mehta, sharing some insights into the appreciation of Bruckner's music. In just a few moments, we'll hear the good maestro lead the New York Philharmonic in a performance of Bruckner's Seventh Symphony. Bruckner's student, music critic and composer Hugo Wolf, once wrote of him, I've just spoken of Herr Bruckner as a titan that battled with the gods. I could not in truth think of a more appropriate metaphor with which to characterize this composer, combining as it does both praise and disparagement in equal portions, raw natural forces against the predominance of the intellect. Indeed, it took 60 years, and this piece, the Seventh Symphony, for Bruckner to earn acceptance in the musical community of Vienna and beyond. We asked Maestro Meta to discuss how, in his estimation, this piece succeeded where earlier efforts failed. In other words, why does this symphony remain the composer's most famous work? Well, it's probably because it's more accessible to the ear of Vienna in those days. But uh, the Seventh Symphony did have huge success, even in Bruckner's time. Um, you know, it is this undying devotion and love for Wagner mixed with him as a devout Catholic, which of course Wagner was not. Wagner has no uh, interest in that side, uh, although Parsifal approached Christianity in a metaphysical way. But he was naive in the sense that it started with God and ended with God in his way of thinking. Plus the fact that he's an organist, so he writes the organ into the orchestra. He is not a formal student of Viennese classicism as Brahms was. In other words, form means very little to him, although he keeps to a loose sonata form, but it's, you know, where you have a second and first subjects with development, but it's not uh, done in the strict way that Brahms inherited from Beethoven. Uh, you have to have all this in mind when you interpret, and you have to read a lot of his letters to see how devout he was. When you see his autographs of his scores, he even writes how many rosaries, how many Our Fathers he uh, prayed between one section and the other. Um, one has to take that into consideration. You know, people like Mozart, even if you don't know anything about Mozart, you could still probably be a good interpreter. In Bruckner's case, you must know him, and you must know his background and his, his mountains even, <laughs> that he composed uh, between one range and the other outside of Vienna. Uh, it's naivete. And all that mixed together shows you why the Vienna of Brahms did not respect him. Of special note in Bruckner's Seventh Symphony are the composer's hallmark brass sonorities, enriched by the Wagner tuba, a cross between a French horn and a tuba, invented by Richard Wagner for his ring operas. While composing the adagio for the seventh, Bruckner learned of Wagner's illness and wrote to a friend, one day I felt very sad. The thought had crossed my mind that the master would not live much longer. Then, the C-sharp minor theme of the adagio came to me. Three weeks later, Wagner died, and Bruckner revised the adagio, adding an elegiac coda for the man he idolized and revered, in memory of the dearly beloved master. Once again, Zubin Mehta. The adagio in Bruckner is Bruckner also weeping over Wagner's grave. He heard, whilst conducting, or whilst composing this movement, he heard the news about Wagner's death and the great climax, which he then added also a symbol to it, uh, was his outpouring. And in the end, this, this high violin line just crying over Wagner's grave. It's just not uh, 
piece of pretty writing. It has great depth in it.